Question two comes in from my dude F Zum Elix, and they've asked, what's your approach on learning music versus learning drums? So I'll try and answer this one a little bit quicker. Basically, if I need to learn a song, the first thing that I wanna know is do I need to know this song note for note? If the answer is no, I'm gonna go straight to thinking about the song structure. So firstly, knowing the order of the different sections of the track. So does it go intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, middle eight, double chorus, or whatever it is. Secondly, how many bars are in each section? And then I'm just thinking about what feel does each section have? Any stops or hits and the transitions from one section to another. But if I do need to know a song note for note, then it becomes much more particular. So let's say I need to learn a particular groove that has a hard bit of phrasing in there then I might spend a lot of time just learning that one particular phrase. Once I've got it down, I'll make sure that, again, I can go between the sections, make sure those transitions are sounding tight, but I'm really thinking about the individual phrases that need to be played note for note. And the difference is, when I'm just learning to play drums in general, I wouldn't really think so much about one particular phrase, but more about the overall concept. Now, learning a concept might involve learning individual phrases, but I'm much more interested in knowing how it all links together. So whatever makes up that one phrase, let's say, like in the previous example, let's say that in that phrasing, there's double strokes played between the bass drum and snare drum, rather than just learning that one idea and repeating it back, I'd be much more excited to see if I can permutate that idea or see if I can do it in different ways. Let's, let's say you've already learned to keep that right hand going on 16th notes. Maybe try the exact same thing, but doubling up your right hand with your bass drum. It's gonna give you a really different sound. So I'm trying to expand off of what I've learned and see how it all fits together rather than just focusing on that one particular phrase or idea. Whereas if it's a song, I'll just learn that one phrase or idea. Maybe later down the line, I might be interested to know how it all kind of works and the concepts behind it. But if it's for a gig or a recording or something like that, I'll just learn the track, get it down, practice it, get the muscle memory in, good to go, mate. So I hope that answered your question, mate. And question three has been sent in by my dude, Oliver Bignall, who asked, how would you expand your fill vocabulary and avoid treading the same ground? So first thing is, I think a lot of drummers feel like this, but one thing to remember is that you might practice the same phrases or you might play a lot of the same fills, but you hear those same fills a million times because you play them every time you play drums. Whereas if you play a gig, loads of those people in the audience might have never seen you like play drums before. So to them, every time you play a fill, it's something brand new and you might be playing something that they've never heard before, which inspires them to go and learn a different concept. And I actually listened to a podcast with a skateboarder called Andrew Reynolds, who's really well known for doing a trick called a frontside flip. And in this podcast, he said that he thinks about his frontside flip rather than feeling like he does it too much or he just keeps doing the same thing over and over again and doing what's expected. He sees it like a superpower because he knows that if he goes to a demo, and he does a frontside flip, everybody at that demo is gonna go mad because they know him for that trick. So everybody's hoping he's gonna do it. So to not do it, it's kind of disappointing. So that, I thought that was like a really cool way to think of it. It's like, okay, get your phrases down, but if you keep playing the same stuff, it's part of your sound and it could be a superpower. It could be something that people look forward to when they come and see you play. That being said, that doesn't mean that you don't wanna learn anything new because you're probably gonna get bored of playing drums if you don't keep learning and those same fills aren't gonna work in every setting. So what I would personally do is either take a phrase that you already play a lot and see if you could change it. Maybe that's moving the accents. Maybe that's starting left-hand lead rather than right-hand lead. Um, maybe that's putting it into a different subdivision. Or something else you could do is see if you can go totally like against what you're already doing. So let's say at the moment you're playing like a lot of busy linear fills and you keep coming back to the same like busy sounding fills, maybe like 16th like triplets or 30 seconds or whatever, maybe you could go the complete opposite way and see if you could experiment with playing fills where you leave a lot more space. So if I just play a groove, I'll just play like a couple of different fill ideas, but I'll purposefully not play a lot of notes and see what you think of the sound of it.
So I, nothing I played there was particularly complicated in the fills, but sometimes just that little bit of space or changing the texture could be more than enough. Thirdly, listen to loads of music and listen to loads of drummers and see if you can find some fills that you like the sound of but you don't already know how to play and then see if you can work out exactly what that fill is made of. So it could be transcribing it, it could be just doing it from ear, but you'll probably find that a lot of the time people are playing similar phrases to what you're already playing, but maybe just doing it in a slightly different way. So that's some, gonna set you on a new path of something new that you could start to explore and importantly, don't just learn the exact fill and leave it there. See if you can then try out your own version of it and just experiment, man. The last thing I'll say is if you're totally stuck and you're just like in a rut with it, I would just buy a lesson pack from someone that you like the sound of. So the one that I've been going through recently is from Matt Gartsgar. I've forgotten the actual, like, official name, but it's his Chops lesson pack. And it's just filled with like, loads of pages of PDFs of different patterns that he uses and there's loads of patterns in there that I've literally never played before until going through that pack so that's straight away just going to give you loads of different options open some new doors so hopefully that helps Oliver let me know how you get on man